G'day guys, my name's Josh, you can call me Zawoodle and welcome back to 7 Days to Die. We're back in our testing world, our Zawoodle Park world, to build another base. But this one's a little bit different. This is a one where I'm going to explore what I can do in this game, like try and build a new base or test something new. This is going to be something I've already done. I'm going to be going and rebuilding the barn base that I used for the first like two weeks-ish ish of the horde every night series so a base that i already know works very well and very reliably but it's a super easy super cheap and very quick base to make that will save your life so i thought i should probably go in and make one of those from start to finish to show you guys how to do it why it works how it works and what's good about it but also make sure in the new seven days to die alpha 20 uh, stable that just came out. Make sure it still works the way that I think it does before I start giving some shoddy advice. So unlike the killing corridor here and the hatch hallway, although it's pretty small. It's a bit of a small boy. It's like a pygmy hatch hallway. What's like a small version of a hallway called? Like a, I don't know, a hatch alley? I'm not sure. Either way, it's a bit smaller than what it used to be. Uh, unlike those where they're built from scratch using all your materials that you have to acquire, the barn base, as the name imp uh, implies, is built in a barn. Now, I know that there's one of these barns over here somewhere. I've seen these barns in almost every town I've ever... There it is, right there. In almost every town I've ever been in, in Alpha 20. They're super common, especially on the outskirts of a village. So have a look around. That's what the um the footprint on the map looks like. But this is what the barn looks like. Now, even though that house over there is part of the POI, we don't care about that one right now. We're only interested in this little schlosh banger over here. We're only interested in this buddy boy. We're going to get inside it and make it out. The way that I got into this base when I first came here was to go through like the wall at the front here, through the gate. So... Doesn't really matter how you get into it, but do be aware there will be, we can already see them around, there will be quite a lot of mups just hanging out inside here. So you will have to clear out the barn. I doubt, if you were going here in your first week, I doubt there would be this many, but even with the settings I'm rolling this testing world on, there's what, five or six zombies in here? Not really too many at all. Not too much of an ask to deal with them, assuming you're coming here relatively well prepared. Just have... I don't know, a lumpy stick in your hands or something to make sure you can swat them down as they come for you. But this is it. This is the money room. This is where everything is going to happen for us. I'm excited to see if it's all going to pan out the way it used to. Because they might have actually patched the laddering that zombies used to have issues with. We'll see if that one works out first. And then we'll build it how I had it. And I'll show you guys why it works so well. I'm just going to leave my body up the top there. Because I want to see... There was an issue when I first built this at the drop of Alpha 20. I built this on day one of Alpha 20, by the way. Um, there was an issue back then where zombies wouldn't path up ladders if there was anything above their heads. I don't know why that was a thing. It just seemed to be the way that the zombies were thinking. So I had to build another system for the zombies to make it up to me. But now that we've got Alpha 20 stable, I want to see if that is still the case. So let's get a couple of our leans. Get their attention. And look at that. Look at that. They're already using the ladders. Except for when they get to there, apparently. Can you go up the ladder, please, Arles? I don't want you climbing hay bales. It seems heckin' bloody dangerous. You might find a needle in there if you're particularly unlucky. And there you go. There you go. They sure as shit now make it all the way up the top. They've fixed the ladder bug, which is a good thing for many reasons. But I'm still going to get rid of them because I liked the way that I had the barn base, which didn't utilize the ladders at all. I've gone ahead and gotten rid of the ladders. That's all good. I'm also going to get rid of the boxes down below. Now, I am using the dev tool. I'm using the super digger, which destroys any block in one hit just for the sake of saving some time because cruising around with a stone axe or something as if I was still in day one uh, would just wait, take way too long. But I know this is doable because I did it on day one. So definitely a thing that's possible. But what I want to do... Oh, by the way, I've got rid of the boxes up here as well. Pretty good loot in this barn. There's a couple of shotgun messiah crates and a locked chest and a weapons bag. So pretty easy access to some decent gubbins if you don't have anything already. But what I want to do is I want to go through and I want to give the zombies a predictable way to get up to me. What I did last time is build myself like a pretty solid staircase from the ground there up to there and around and up the top. 
And the bonus of that was that I could sit up here as my horde fighting platform and shoot arrows or pipe machine gun or pipe shotgun, whatever I had, down into the zombies down below. It gave me an easy way to get consistent headshots. So that's what I'm going to build. I just need to get cracking with it. So just like when I built this the first time, I want it to be in line with the right hand side of that window up there. This is just my personal preference. It's how I did it. But so you can change this to suit you. But this is just what I did. So the right side of the window up there. And I want to start the stairs. I think that's the right spot. Just one block back from that pillar. So kind of in line with there. That's all the right angles. Okay, we're good. Let's just build ourselves a nice, easy stairway. What I want the zombies to be doing is taking their sweet ass time getting up here. So from the top, if I could get up here without completely binning my teleportation skills. You can see that from standing here, I've got a perfect line of sight down those stairs. So if I had like a penetrator perk, I'm using a shotgun where you often are getting uh, double and triple kills from the spread of the pellets. That's going to group the zombies up really nicely down there. So that's how, that's how I built those stairs up there. Plus you have the added benefit of zombies stumbling when they jump. Because this can, if you're lucky, especially for the first couple of days, this can turn into effectively the cheapest and easiest AFK base you'll ever see. I'm going to wait to make that claim until I've actually got to the end of this to see how it reacts uh, in the stable version. But it could potentially be a very simple AFK joint. We'll put some plates across there just to match up with that panel over that side. But that there is the first lot of ascension done for the zombies. They'll cruise up there, over here, and run around here. Now all I need is something similar on this side and we're good to go. I'm just getting rid of all like the pipes and stuff that hang out up the top here. Be wary when I was doing this, the physics in the barn were <laughs> a little bit out of your going. There's a little bit left of kilter. So some things may act a little strangely, but that's something to keep in mind. Get rid of all of those. And then what I'm going to do is just get rid of those poles down the guts there. Don't need to worry too much about the other ones. Those ones are fine. In fact, normally when you're breaking those, you'll probably have a collapse at some point. That's okay though, as long as this pole here is still in place and some several of those down the line as well for some extra support later. But now that I have that gone, just from the top, I'm gonna go like that and build a cheeky deeky little stair. Just only two stairs, that's all you need. Because when the zombies get up to here, they're gonna try and jump onto this. Which is fine, because apparently, well, given the zombies do have decomposing sludge as brains, their coordination and their athleticism are not quite what it once was. So often, they will bin that jump and end up back down the bottom again. But we can give them a helping hand, making sure that's more consistent. So along this gap, now that we've cleared it out, I'm just putting in uh, the side centered poles. So you have lots of different pole options now. In the basic options though, you have three different poles. The regular one that sits on the corner of the block, the center one in the center of the block, but you don't get any prizes for figuring that one out. And then the side center, which sits on the side, but in the center, which is different to the regular pole. And I'm just going along and is giving them a path all the way along to there. Now it's important to use the side centered poles because the zombies don't see the other poles as a viable path, especially with the regular pole, the centered pole they might, but it sits differently to how I want it to. So it's gotta be the side centered. And that's all it is. I haven't upgraded any of these blocks at all. All I've done is destroyed a couple of things, then put down some picker upperable shapes. And I think we're pretty much good to go. So just to put my money where my mouth is for the moment, let's jump back up to here. Let's just get a, not up here, I'll go back down the bottom, please, back with the rest of you. I don't know why you're spawning on top of me. Whatever, go down the bottom, go down the bottom. There we go. Now, if I turn your AI on, I just want to see how this is going to pan out. So they're already going up, which is good. They're not taking any swings, which is also good. Obviously, a later game horde will probably do a fair bit of damage, but if you're running unupgraded blocks at that point, that's up to you. <laughs> that's, that's your own problem. I can't vouch for that one. But for an early game horde, see what I mean? You may not have to lift a bloody finger. They're going to continue to try and path and continue to bin that jump pretty much all day long. <laughs> I mean, yes, this is only a couple of Arlene's. We're really not putting the game through its paces at the moment. But for the moment, you know, we can at least see 
Go away. We can at least see how I want this game to work or how I want the zombies to path. Because as it stands at the moment, they're posing very little threat to me. And I could just sit here and rinse them. Admittedly, a tier 3 AK is a bit of a stretch for an early game horde. But a pipe pistol, a pipe whatever. If you've got ammo you can spend, spend it here. Take an easy pot shots right to the center mass for a couple of Muppets. Oh, and there you go. One of them finally made it up, but she fell down anyway. That's fine. There will be the occasional clown who seeks that landing, but for the most part, we're pretty much fine. I've murdered all the Arlenes who were out here, but for the sake of science, uh, if I can call it that, I want to know if I spawn 10 Arlenes in. Got 10 Arlenes sitting there nice and happily looking about as she always has. She's got a facelift since the last time that me and her were involved, so she's looking better than ever. Ish. But out of 10 Arlenes, if I run this little system, how long will it take before some zombies start sticking that landing? But even so, you know, one zombie making it across, if with no protection on the other side, is relatively dealable. With a wooden club, you can swat them in the chin and send them goopy back down to the bottom. But I want to know... Oh, there we go. The first one made it. But then fell down with the latter rungs. And that's why I wanted to leave the rungs there. Because they will try and run across them for whatever reason. So as of yet, none of them have made it to the cross. Even if they have stuck the landing, we're still pretty much okay. Which is super manageable, even just with one level of Pummel Pete. Or less than. Very much doable. So far, so good. Now, I've been sitting here for quite a while now. Just watching all the Arlenes run their obstacle course. And funnily enough... The ones that do make it up the top, like 99% of the time, they're falling back down the bottom again with no real issues. But occasionally, here we go, one might make it up the top, but they get so distracted by running across these lateral beams that you really don't have anything to worry about. I haven't moved nor lifted a finger nor done anything this entire time. I could be making a cup of coffee. You guys want anything? You want a cup of tea? You want a coffee? You want a brew? You want a snack? You want a box of shapes? Or a backpack of burger rings? I don't mind. I've got time to run to the kitchen or the servo and grab a sausage roll with no real issues at all. The only small downside is that occasionally they get stuck over here and they break those stairs, which isn't too much of an issue. They can still get up. They're not touching the actual important blocks, just like the extras on the side. So... I don't know, a bit of upgrading there might not go too far down uh, a bad road, but for the most part, we're looking pretty good. I'm happy to call this. I'm happy to call this. This is effectively an AFK base with very little effort. It may not be the easiest AFK base out there, but for an early game horde base to control the horde and give you a fighting chance, find a barn, put a couple of brocks down for the, what, expenditure of 40 wood maybe to make, I don't know, 40 frame blocks, not much at all, very bloody doable. So now that we have the basic mechanic of it down, now we can start building up. And the first thing, in fact, it's not even really something you should do after building all this stuff. Something you should do when you first build the rest of this nonsense is get your... Now, I think I used the same side-centered poles that I did for the crossing here. But what I'm going to do is put them horizontally. Oops, one too far, like that. Just like that to block the zombies' access. If it'll go across the sides as well, in case they do manage to get kind of lucky and make it over here. Um, stick you there. I want to get rid of that torch. I know it's a light fixture. It would be pretty bloody useful, but get rid of it anyway. And just put a couple of poles in like that. Now, I know that this, uh, the Fun Pimps did bring out an update to nerf poles. They, do, like, they have 50% less HP, I think it was, than a full standing block. But that doesn't matter if you can defend them. That's not going to matter, you know, if you're trying to use it as some way to keep zombies out. They'll take a couple of swings and break it. But if I'm up here I'm holding nothing but a wooden club, for example, just grab you, I can sit here, I can swing through and bonk a couple of zombies with very little worry to me. Because as soon as I make their legs go jelly-like, they're going to slip off the side and fall back down the bottom and go back to doing their pathing that they were already doing before. Arlene, want to show us, please? There you go. I mean, I don't think I'm going to have an opportunity to show you anyway, because as we've established, it was already an AFK base. But I can still fire my pipe shotgun through there. Let's get ourselves a pipe pistol, actually. And some 9mm. There we go. So I can still sit here and fire my pistol down into the horde down below. 
But if they do manage to make it up here, I can grab my bat. I can take a swing, send it back down as well. And just have that extra line of defense, should I ever need it. Though by the looks of things, I don't think I will. The base is already working too well. I think actually the reason this um this block over here seems to be the only one that's having any issues whatsoever. But I think the reason for that is a zombie gets trapped under here and sees that little nodule there as a path blocker. You and I can make it up there. We're fine. But the zombie sees that and goes, mm, uh, yeah, nah, mate. Don't think I can do it. So I think to get a, uh, around that, I mean, this stuff here isn't really used for anything anyway. So I'll get rid of all of you. Open that up a little bit. I'm going to leave you... Just repair you. But I'm going to leave you unupgraded for the moment just to see if that works a bit better. You've caught some accidental swings. So have you. Occasionally, the zombies get stuck on their friends and try to beat the shit out of their compatriots and accidentally damage your base uh, in the meantime. Oh, that's also copped a couple of accidental swings. But again... This is all unupgraded blocks. If they were trying to break this shit, they would break this shit in a heartbeat without any real sweat being broken. But I think that's all fine. The other thing I want to do just to kind of add to this is get rid of these. Mostly because... Oh, actually... Mm, no, I'll, I'll take that back. I'll leave that one there as a path back to the other side in case they land over this side. But what I want to do... If I chuck you there. I want to have it so when they jump over the top here and whiff it they will immediately fall that's, that's a miss all the way back down to the bottom to start again rather than landing here which they still might from these horizontal planes uh or pipes or poles even uh they might land over there still so i need that path at the back but if they jump over here and miss i want them back down the bottom so i can predict where they're going to be at every given moment I'm not sure if it's still super necessary, but in my survival game, when I was building this not in creative in the Horde Every Night series, I did also get rid of a lot of these panels here, mostly just to stop the zombies having any other ideas of breaking down the barn to get to me, just giving them less access points to me, so they're always going to go in a predictable manner. So get rid of those. Nothing's collapsing. We're all fine. One other thing as well, you may be wondering, how the hell am I supposed to get up to my little fighting platform up there if I've gotten rid of all the access points? And really easily, with our new picker upperable ladders, that one there, just chuck a ladder like that and like that. Now, you and me could use that very easily. I'll get rid of you as well because you're kind of just in the way for the moment. All the way up to there. Nice and easy. Now, it's very easy to make that jump and be up the top here. Um, but because I am a Muppet in everything that I do, I'm a right Roger and uh, Galar, I'm going to grab this hatch. And this is a little trick of the trade I picked up over the journey. And stick you upside down. Now look for the hinges. Remember the hinge on the right hand side? Those three triangles is where the hatch will actually pivot from. So I want that to be underneath my ladders. So I can stick you like that. You're nice and supported. But I can use that as a platform to easily get onto the ladder, but I can drop it down so the zombies can't use it. Super simple, simple, super easy, and makes life so much easier. You can also, once you get to the top, chuck another one up the top should you so desire to. Simple rotation. Always put the hinges when you're up the top away from where your ladder is so you can bonk your nose into it and go right onto the ladder nice and easily. And look at that. Have a nice, easy way to get in and out of your little horde base then without having to do much at all. Just like Muppet proofing your base design. Actually, I think now that I've said all that out loud, I'm going to go back on everything I just said and put the hinges for you on this side. It's what I did in survival. Purely so I can open you up and you're another barrier to entry uh, for the zombies. Just an extra wall that's removable. I can still get in and out, but the zombies can't. And that's the all important part. So with that, we'll have a cheeky squeeze at another couple of owls. Get you, turn your AI on, and get you guys to come up the top. Just to make sure this is still going the way I want it to. I've popped the camera out, but they're still going to target my body, not where my camera is. Uh, just so I can see exactly how they're part a bit easier. So they're coming up. They're fine. Again, no blocks here have been upgraded, so we're still rolling with just basic wooden frames. Just see that. So that's what I wanted to get rid of. I didn't want them going over underneath me. Oh, Arlene made it all the way across. Trying to get up and over the top. Some more poles over there wouldn't be a bad idea. But they're still working out perfectly. Don't know why you are trying to go out that way. 
There you go. You changed your mind. Use the path I replaced. Get back where you should be. Up and over the top again for me. There you go. So that's all it is. So the occasional zombie that makes it across, I can sit here and I can wail on them to my heart's content. You can use regular poles for this or centered poles or whatever you want. Whichever gives you the best angle. I just use the center ones during the um during the series. But I can just sit here, shoot a couple of mups in the face. They usually stagger when they jump, so you have a pretty good opportunity to line up a decent headshot and not just be spraying and praying. And one makes up the top. I need to fix that. I need to fix that. Thank you for finding a floor in my current plan, Arlene. But when they do make it up to the top, you're going to sit there with your bat and send them back down from whence they came. We'll just go like, wait, like that. Get the hell out of the way, Arlene. I'm currently building something to stop you doing that. You go like that. And there we go. There was a hole. The hole's been fixed. Make it all nice and symmetrical. We're all good. We're all good. I'm just letting the horde of Arlene's run a little longer. Make sure you're up the top. Just to see if anything untoward does happen. Now, I've run several hordes through this already. Either now or um, in the series. You're still missing. You're fine. I do want another one now to make her way back up the top so I can bonk her in the knees and send her goopy leggedly back down to the bottom. Look at that, though. If you're making headshots count... <laughs> Unlike that, you should really be pretty much okay. Even with just basic weapons you'll easily find in your first week. Come on, here we go. And because like the regular hordes as well, the only eight zombies, and depending on difficulty you play, should be relatively weak maps on the first go. This should be pretty much viable. I've accidentally murdered too many Arlene's though. Oh, I thought I spawned in bears. No, we're fine. Come on, make it, make it. Now, see, even when I want you to make it, you still won't. It's too good. I can't even test the things anymore because the zombies are just getting bamboozled way too easily. Come on. I've got faith in you. Faith in you. <gasps> there you go. No, come on. I thought positive reinforcement had an effect, but you're just teasing me, Arlene. Not the first time either. Here we go. Here we go. Love your work, Arlene. You can't get over the top. You groupified yourself by having a jump, but that's okay. Kind of proof in the pudding. So you took one swing. And did 44 damage. All right. That's relatively manageable. That might be slightly less manageable. Apparently, a scream has shown up. All right. Well, that kind of brings us to the next point. At the moment, I have just been spawning in the zombies to run the pathing for me. There isn't an easy way for zombies to make it inside. But that's what hordes do. A horde will show up. Yes, I know there's like an opening in the front door down below me, but the zombies will make their own holes. You don't need to worry about it so much. They'll find their own way in. They're not going to break the barn to the point where it collapses. They're just going to carve a couple of holes in the walls or the doors or whatever and come say g'day. So you're going to sit here and have a bit of a reprieve for the first couple of moments of a horde and wait for them to join you. But realistically, this is fine. This works out in your favor. There we go. They're all inside. Here comes a bit more of a significant horde. I do need that screamer to piss off, though. That's enough, sweetheart. Thank you for moaning and groaning, but you can go back to your third floor bathroom and moan a bit more there for me. So this is curious, actually. This is a significantly bigger horde than what I was running a second ago with just the Arlene. So I guess we're putting it through the next lot of paces to see how it's going to go. There's someone saying hello. I need you to be goopy though, please. There we go. If you put even a couple of points into Pummel Pete or Skull Crusher for Sledgehammers or whatever it is for Fisticuffs, then you're going to be much better off than you would be otherwise. Don't know why. <laughs> There's a lot of shots into your jiggly bits. Don't know why you're going that way. But for the most part, we're looking all sweet. One of them has made it up to the top. Didn't really do any damage to the frames, only did some damage to me. But everything else is. Oh, they have broken the stairs actually. All right, so for a more considerable horde, we're going to need to do some upgrades. The weak ass frames won't last forever, but if you're expecting them to, you are already in for a bad time. So now comes the next part of all of this. In fact, I need all of you to go away for me, please. I'll get another horde later on. There's some pretty good damage around the base. I'll grab that key to open the door that doesn't exist. And I'll just open up another couple of little alleyways for those zombies to find their way in. The easier it is for them to find their way in, the more predictable their pathing will be. Um, that's okay. A bit of an explosive there, but we're all right. Now, there is some cobblestone around the barn. Cobble, not hard to get. You need clay and stone, I think it is, just to make yourself 
just cobblestone rocks, make cobblestone sh shapes if you really want to. But just getting cobble, not too much of an ask. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take that under my wing and just upgrade to cobble. Need some wood as well, actually, to do that. Already got some wood. We're fine. So upgrade you and up to cobble. Easy as that. Cobblestone will stop the accidental breakages that some pissed off zombies might do when they swing at their friends. It'll just make it a bit more predictable and a bit more lovely. But to go up to that level, we're going to uh, get a bit more creative than we were before. Get some nice aesthetics going because aesthetics matter at all times. Can't be making some dog shit bases out here now, can we? I've gone ahead and upgraded, oh, almost all of the, um, the wooden frame blocks I put down up to cobble. If you have a limited amount of cobblestone or concrete, over your strongest material is, is upgrade your weakest links to be the strongest so for example the things that are critical for how the zombies path so for this most of it's pretty pretty cool pretty pretty cool that's a new sentence okay brain uh most of it's pretty critical if i speak properly for once in my life mainly though the stairs down here this is where the big group of zombies is going to be so accidental hits are more likely so this here should be your strongest if you got concrete make it concrete got steel make it steel depending on how far along you want this base to go uh but once they're up and on the straight and narrow you don't really need to worry about it this should be cobble as well and these blocks here should be cobble but once they're up here these blocks along here could just be wood, probably not just frames. And then these ones here where they're more likely to get tickled by a zombie should be cobble as well. But all in all, I mean, not a lot of resources. I upgraded every block I've put down to be cobblestone. I only used, what, 360 cobblestone? Not that much at all. Definitely achievable in not a great amount of time. And that's just made everything so much more stable, so much more usable, so much more better. Um, but there's still one more thing we can do to make this true AFK and remove any worries at all that we might have that something's going to go wrong. And it involves getting a little friend. And this is said friend. This is Sammy the Sledgehammer Turret. A wonderful little accomplice for all of your zombie murdering needs. As long as you treat him correctly. You know, you've got to look after him. When he does something good, you walk on over and go... Pat, pat, pat. Gotta be patting your turrets, gotta be showing them the love, or else how would they know that they've done the right thing? Now, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. The reason that I like using those side-centered um, poles that I have here, not the regular poles, is because they seem to stay out of Sammy's way just that little bit more. And if I put Sammy kind of off to the side, even just like there, for example, then that means that if a zombie does manage to get up here, manages to get up the stairs without make, getting goopy knees, make the jump over there onto these poles and get all the way along, then Sammy's going to have his way with them and not really worry about it at all. So give me a couple of Arlene's over there, given the advantage of already being up where they need to be. Come over this way, please. You got this, Sammy. Bonk, down you go. Bonk, down you go. Back down they go again. Sammy's out of harm's way. He's not going to get accidentally shot in the ass with a shotgun. Who would ever do that? But you can sit here, watch him bonk a couple of Arlene's, give him the pats he deserves, pat, 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 and just be home and host. So even with all the other obstacles that zombies have to overcome, if they do make it to the final straw, the final moments, Sammy's got them covered, and you can put your feet up and have yourself a cuppa. Cheers. Now, clearly, like, being dependent on the sledgehammer turret means you do have to find one at some point in that first week, but they're pretty common, I think. I haven't really had any trouble finding one in the first week, or even the first couple of days at any point. Raid, like, a, a Moe's Electronics Shop, whatever it's called, like, the places you're more likely to find drone stuff, and you'll get yourself a sledgehammer pretty bloody easily. But I think now we've done all that, I think we're pretty good just to run a horde and see how we go. Again, this is only cobble and some smart building. I know people are going to say that this is a cheese base. It's not. A killing corridor is a cheese base. That's duping the zombies into thinking they have a path when they really don't. This is giving them a path that's viable and usable if they had the talent to make it. And you're still at risk of having your chops blown. But it's not my fault they're zombies they're not particularly brain heavy they don't, they don't have the coordination to make it happen they try they fail and occasionally <laughs> occasionally monty python shows up and a chicken decides that it wants a bar of you all right yeah nah never mind then i'll let you run free back into the paddock and eat a couple of corn seeds 
But there is a viable path. They're just not good enough to make it happen. That's not my fault. That's just playing smart cricket. So we'll run a horde, see how we go. I think this should work out pretty well though. I can hear the beating and the footsteps. And I can even see the zombies starting to pile in. So this will be nice and interesting. I'm not sure if I want to actively fight these guys or not. My game stage is 105. So I'm well beyond the point where this base was really designed to work this well. This is just like a, if you need a base for the first two weeks that's effectively AFK, here you bloody go. You can focus on other things and let the zombies have their own, their own fun. Ah, oh, Sammy, look at you go. Pat, pat, pat. What a bloody lovely little lad to spend the apocalypse with. But so far, I mean, other than beating through the walls of the barn, they're not taking any swings at the rest of this stuff from what I can see. I, I might need to put down some stairs or something down there to make their passage up those stairs a bit easier because they only really take those swings when they get stuck. ScoMo. Oh, hit the poles. There you go, right in the gut. You got a lot to aim for. Lots of Big Macs in there to have your way with. Pat, pat, pat. Good job, Sammy. Keep up your wonderful work. Because at the moment, we don't really have a whole lot of issues to worry about, do we? I'll stay behind the bars just to make sure I'm nice and safe. But haven't had to lift a finger yet, and we're doing okay. There's really only one issue with this so far. Oh, he's taking some swings at the cobble. That's why I wanted all that to be nice and strong. Again, if you had concrete, that's the place you put the concrete. Because they do have, zombies do have a rage mode. If they fall down and take damage, they do have the chance to just go into destroy everything setting. And that will just take whatever is closest to them, whether it be zombie, stair, building, ground, bloody puddles of water if they want to, and start swinging their sledgehammers at them. So that is the thing you do have to take into account. That's why you wanted the stairs to be as strong as possible. Not really an issue up the top. It's really only down the bottom when they are taking the damage from the fall. You need to get out of there. Sorry, bud. There you go. They do reset out of that mode after a couple of seconds. So not too much of an issue. The biggest issue, though, that didn't happen the entire time I wasn't paying attention at all, is some of the bigger zombies, like a Mo, will get up the top here. And Sammy... Where the hell are you going? Sammy will hit these bars instead of hitting the zombie. I'll see if I can get one of them to show up, but so far we're pretty much so good. Oh, oh, here we go. Nah, never mind. Fell through that hatch that I left for him. Here we go. Yeah, see, there you go. So occasionally Sammy will hit that pole instead of hitting the zombie. But I mean, if you're here, it's just a little tickle and you'll fall back down again. But we, I mean, what I have done is found a better spot for Sammy to live where he's not just breaking the bases and breaking zombies. There you go. Good job, Sammy. Pat, pat, pat. So I think we'll find a better spot for him. Just make him even more OP than he already is. So what I've done is I've just gotten rid of these poles over this side. The rest of those can stay there. I'm not too concerned about those. But I've got rid of just this side and the light that the zombies occasionally like to straddle. Which is interesting. The only thing I know of that's light and likes to be straddled is we'll have to ask Arlene about. But then what we can do, we can grab Sammy and just chuck him here. Oh... Um, yeah, there should do. I'm thinking that maybe I want to move him slightly closer to the poles here. But if I'm up here with my bat, the occasional zombie that makes it across, at least Sammy should be able to deal with. I can still only just reach and go pat, pat, pat from here. But if you're out there, Sammy boy, and I have the zombies coming towards me, if they do make it up onto these poles, you should have an easy swing to bonk them down. Now, of course, that gets more and more efficient the more points you put into uh, whatever it was called. What I am, uh, uh, intellect, robotics and stuff. The robotics skill will make Sammy even better again. But for the most part, you're going to sit here, have a time. And as soon as one of, the, one of them makes it up here, almost no cigar though, we'll be able to see Sammy in action. But for now, we're pretty much sweet. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Just like that. So, I guess we're fine. Guess it's easy done. I might just go have a kip on the couch while I wait for the horde to be over. So for like the first couple of hordes of the game, you're not fighting zombies to this magnitude. This is more zombies than everybody have to face. They're harder, scarier, bigger, stronger, and feralier than they would be in a regular horde. So if you, even a tier one Sammy, gonna kick the shit out of the horde without too much dramas. But there you go. I can kill them at a whim. I don't have to kill them if I don't want to. They're just going to run circles all bloody day long. And my contingency plan, same with the sledgy, pat, 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 gets pats for good work. And what good work he does as well 
I might even actually just quickly grab you and you. Sammy's got me covered and chuck some of those in just to stop the occasional errant zombie from somehow making it through. Like that. Can I squeeze under there still actually? Can I? Oh, I can too. All right, nice. That makes it even better again. But look at him go. I don't even have to pay attention. I can go and do crafting or whatever I want to do or just like slurp down some boiled meat should I so desire. And the worst thing that's going to happen is like two zombies might show up at once. Sammy hits one. I groupify the other. And we don't really have any dramas at all. Job done. Job bloody done. Barn base is king. I've put a couple of lanterns in just because it's quite dark, actually. Funny that. The nighttime is pretty dark and dingy. But Sammy's got me covered. And I think we're pretty much all good to go. You can see how their parting's going. Don't know where ScoMo's going over there, but they're all having a lovely time just going around in circles. The biggest issue is going to be these stairs down here. Make them as strong as possible. If you neglect to upgrade those to your appropriate level as the hordes go on and that breaks well you've only got yourself to blame like good base building won't fix bad gameplay it just it just won't all it can do is give you your best chance so if you build it right and then you still die get good <laughs> i suppose um nah i'm just kidding but either way uh this is working an absolute treat so this is an alpha 20 stable again so this should work for everyone Sammy just completely ignored that biker for some reason, but still just fell off the side anyway, so no real dramas then. I think we're pretty much good to go. We're pretty much good to go. This will work with dogs and stuff as well. Dogs can't climb ladders, but they will go up the stairs, so that's all good. Sammy's got me covered there. Um, demos and stuff, I always say this now. If you shoot a demo when he's nipple and he explodes, that's on you. Don't set off bombs in your horde bases. But... This is working spiffingly. This is working extra bloody good. So I think we can bloody leave that there. I think we're good to go. We're going to crack open a pack of mint slices and sip on our coffees and frothies and have a wonderful bloody time laughing at the zombies' expense. Long have to leave this episode here, I think, and come back and build some more horde bases in another episode because this episode is done. So thank you guys for watching. Most of all, thank you to the page of the Patreon who made this episode possible. If you liked it, make sure you hit the like button down below and subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter. If I don't talk to you there first, I'll see you in the next episode. Have a good one.